Every single college football season, we always have one team that comes out of nowhere and shocks the nation and completely surpasses their expectations. In 2017, it was UCF, and in 2018, it was the University of Kentucky. This past season, the Minnesota Golden Gophers went 11-2, recording their best finish in the past 50 years, defeated number 4 Penn State, and won the Outback Bowl over the Auburn Tigers. Led by head coach PJ Fleck and quarterback Tanner Morgan, the Gophers surpassed expectations, as in the preseason, they were projected to finish 6th in the Big Ten West, but now they are projected to build on their strong season. They haven't won the Big Ten outright or won a national championship in over 50 years, but now their future is brighter than ever. But how did Minnesota football get to this point? In today's video, we'll be looking at the recent rise of Minnesota football and exploring if this success is sustainable. To understand this rise, I think that a good starting point would be the 2011 season. At the time, the program had just hired Jerry Kill away from Northern Illinois with the hope of getting the Golden Gophers back to bowl play with some level of consistency. Kill had some success with the Huskies himself, guiding them to three bowl games in the three seasons he was there, and helped transform them into a contender in the MAC. In the previous four seasons before he got to Minnesota, the program had just one winning season and were on a four game bowl losing streak, and he was trusted to turn this around. Unfortunately, Kill's first two seasons didn't change anything, as the Gophers went 3-9 in 2011 and then 6-7 in 2012. At least in 2012, Minnesota made a bowl game, but they lost to Texas Tech. Also, they started out that season at 4-0, so to end it at 6-7 was ultimately disappointing. The offense at this time wasn't that great, as the team had averaged 18 points per game in 2011 and then 22 points per game in 2012. But everything changed in 2013 as behind a strong defense that ranked 25th in the nation and running back David Cobb who totaled over 1,200 yards in the year, Minnesota finished with an 8-5 record. Unfortunately, they lost their bowl game to Syracuse by 4 points. Still, it was a very successful season. Minnesota at one point was 7-2, with their most impressive wins coming against a ranked Nebraska team at home and Penn State. They even were ranked at number 23 at one point, which was the first time they had been ranked in years. It was a good year, and Minnesota finished at 4-4 in Big Ten play, finishing 4th in the Legends division. They were expected to build off this campaign, and they didn't disappoint the following year. They started out 2014 at 6-1, with the only loss coming to TCU. They went 2-2 over the next four games, including a win over Nebraska for the second year in a row, to put them in contention for the Big Ten West title. Their final conference game of the season against Wisconsin would determine who won the division, and a ranked Minnesota team marched into Madison with their sights set on the title. They would lose by 10 points and then proceed to lose their bowl game against Missouri, and despite the sad ending, it was still another positive progressive season. The fact that Minnesota was even in contention for a division title was impressive, and they beat another ranked opponent for the second season in a row. The offense also performed better as they jumped from the 85th ranked offense to the 69th ranked offense. Part of that was due to running back David Cobb, who this time added 1,400 yards in the year, and quarterback Mitch Ledner, who was a threat running and passing the ball. 2015, however, would not go so great for the Golden Gophers, as they lost multiple starters, including David Cobb, and tight end Max Williams, who was the top receiving target for the team. Minnesota started out 2015 at 4-2, but the wheels slowly fell off. Jerry Kill would be forced to leave the team due to health issues, and taking over for him would be defensive coordinator Tracy Clays. It was tough for Minnesota the rest of the way after losing their head coach, but the team did at least remain competitive and finished at 6-7. The good news for Minnesota was that their bowl losing streak was finally over, as they beat Central Michigan 21-14 behind a strong rushing performance. Clays would take over as the full-time head coach for the 2016 season, and he found some success. Minnesota was very competitive this season, starting off 3-0 before dropping the next two games against Penn State and Iowa by a combined 10 points. They reeled off a four game win streak before finishing off the year at 2 2 over the final four games, leaving them with a 9 4 finish. They only lost one game this season by more than a touchdown, and Minnesota was impressive throughout the entire year. The offense made a jump by averaging almost seven points more than the previous season, and the defense ranked in the top 25 in points allowed. But Clays would be fired on January 3, 2017, after public outrage over a team led boycott. Minnesota was in the market for a head coach once again, but they were finally able to snag their guy this offseason. After looking at a number of different options, Minnesota hired PJ Fleck to be their head coach, and then added Kirk Shiraka as offensive coordinator and Rob Smith as defensive coordinator. Fleck had some experience with rebuilding as he turned a 1-11 Western Michigan team into a 13-1 squad that finished in the top 25 in just four seasons, but his first season at Minnesota would be a rough one, as Minnesota had lost some players from the previous season, including their starting quarterback Mitch Ledner, who didn't really play well in a senior season, but it still hurt losing their starter. 
The team did take a step back in 2017 as expected, going 6-7 and seven and bouncing between two different quarterbacks and Demry Croft and Connor Rhoda. The team had a hot 3-0 start but didn't fare too well in the Big Ten, only winning two conference games. The offense ranked 111th in the nation in offensive scoring and they didn't score a single point the final two weeks of the season. The results were basically the same in 2018 with a fast non-conference start and a slow start to conference play. After seven games sitting at 3-4, Rob Smith was fired as defensive coordinator and Minnesota saw strides in their defense with new coordinator Joe Rossi, only having two games where they allowed 28 points or more. Minnesota finished the season at 7-6 and, and won their bowl game over Georgia Tech. Fleck would bounce between two quarterbacks for the season and leaned on redshirt freshman quarterback Tanner Morgan to lead the way the second half of the season. 2019 was the third year in the Fleck tenure, and this is the year when coaches usually turn it around and see significant progress, but heading into the season, Minnesota was projected to finish sixth in the Big Ten West. What happened next shocked everyone. After starting off undefeated in non-conference play, Minnesota continued their hot start, winning five straight conference games, setting themselves up for a date with undefeated number four Penn State. Minnesota had played pretty well to this date, but this was their biggest test yet, and at home, they didn't back down. They jumped out to a first half lead and didn't look back, winning the game 31-26 and cementing themselves as true contenders in the Big Ten. Unfortunately for them, they had to go on the road to Iowa the following week and lost by four, but they would recover and beat Northwestern the following week to set up a big game against Wisconsin. The winner of this game would move on to the conference title game, but the Badgers proved to be too much for Minnesota as they won by 21 points. The Golden Gophers earned themselves a spot in the Outback Bowl against a good Auburn Tigers team and won 31-24 to give them another marquee win on the year and a top 10 finish in a poll for the first time this century. Minnesota's rise took a little bit of time and there was definitely some rough moments along the way. Still, the fact that Minnesota had such a successful season this year was huge. They hadn't won 10 games since 2003 and even if they don't win a game next year, it doesn't matter. They are here and they did it. So what were the big factors for their rise and is it sustainable? The first reason for their rise, before we talk about the head coach, is quarterback Tanner Morgan. Morgan improved so much from his freshman year to his sophomore year, but to understand that jump, we have to dive into the stats. In his freshman year, starting nine games, he threw six interceptions with a 58% completion percentage. In his sophomore year, starting all 13 games, he threw seven interceptions with a 66% completion percentage. He saw a significant jump in his touchdowns, going from nine passing touchdowns to 30 the next season. He ranked as the top passer in the conference in terms of yards per attempt, and was number one in the conference in terms of yards per play with 8.4. That mark was good enough for the third most yards per play in the entire nation, sitting just behind Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts. His passing efficiency rating of 178.7 was also the second best in the Big Ten and fourth in the entire NCAA. And as a result of his play, Minnesota saw the offense jump from 66 in the nation to 22nd in the nation, averaging 34 points in 2019, their best finish in the decade. But it wasn't just Morgan who contributed, it was the pieces around him too. Receivers Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman were huge, both totaling over a thousand yards receiving on the season. Johnson was pretty good in 2018, but Bateman's emergence gave Minnesota two legit receiving options and opened up so much for their offense. The running attack of Rodney Smith, Muhammad Ibrahim, and Shannon Brooks all averaged over five yards per rushing attempt. And this complete domination in terms of offensive play gave Minnesota an offense capable of competing with anyone. The second reason for their rise would be the out-of-conference dominance. When I was looking up information for this video, I was surprised at how often Minnesota would win out-of-conference games. While granted their out-of-conference schedule isn't the best in the nation, it's important to win those games. And Minnesota would generally start their seasons with three or four out-of-conference wins, and they haven't lost a regular season out-of-conference game since 2015. Those fast starts allowed the team to gather some confidence and really get ready for those tough games the Big Ten offers, and that fast start paid off this year. Now for the final reason, we have the hiring of P.J. Fleck. Minnesota saw success with Kill and Clays, but even with both, Minnesota's potential had a ceiling. Those two helped transition the program to a better stage, but it was the hiring of Fleck that would get Minnesota to an even higher level. Fleck brought over a good coaching staff which included Kirk Shiroka, who is now the offensive coordinator at Penn State because of his work with Minnesota and quarterback Tanner Morgan. But Fleck has also brought something to Minnesota, and that was a culture and an identity. Using the slogan, row the boat, Golden Gophers saw change in their attitude on the field. And that quote basically means that everybody on a boat has to help row to make it go. And with the patience and work every day that Minnesota has put in, you can see how much harder they're working to achieve their goals. And that all flipped when Minnesota beat Wisconsin in 2018 to claim Paul Bunyan's axe for the first time in 15 years. Fleck brought a winning mentality, and that was evidenced by linebacker Thomas Barber, who stated that we never heard a coach say that we are going to win a national championship. 
Even though Minnesota wasn't favored to even win the Big Ten West or even make a high quality bowl game, Fleck identified the focus for the team and set the goal in place, even if it appeared unattainable to everybody else. The confidence, belief, and hard work is there and is now set in place and has created a standard at the university that didn't exist before. Fleck has continued to make his mark on the program and has even helped secure three four-star recruits already for the 2021 season. Minnesota completed a dream season in 2019, but they don't appear to be done just yet. Thanks to PJ Fleck and the entire Minnesota team for their self-belief, they have accomplished something that the program hasn't seen in decades. The fans and students have something to rally around, and it's really awesome to see. I personally think that Minnesota football is on the rise. The evidence is clear, and the fact that they have found their man is great. There's so much to like about this program, but they have a new direction and the future is bright. But, as always, only time will tell if Minnesota can continue this rise and go even further and maybe take the Big Ten title. This has been the Rise of Minnesota Football. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will see you guys next time.